Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, we would like to present to you the Yentas of Wrestling, or is it Yentos? Because it's two guys talking about their favorite thing, which uh, no is not the Toronto Blue Jays, no is not the Toronto Maple Leafs, but is professional wrestling. Uh, So today you'll be hearing from Jordan Glass and Eric Friedlander, two pals who randomly were working at a Blue Jays blog a couple of years ago, but didn't even realize that they were working at a Blue Jays blog together. It was it was very True. strange, and now it turns out that we both love the the non sweet science known as wrestling. Uh, before we jump into our topic today, Jordan, I would just like to tell you that one of the matches on NXT tonight is Walter versus Roderick Strong. It's an interesting match. I'm kind of I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, I'm interested in it because it's not what I would have expected them to book. Um, you know, a little bit of a throwback to the old NXT, which I like, um, and we'll see what happens there. I, uh, I'm, re- I'm really interested to see how it goes. I'm just like, give those dudes an hour and I will watch the entire thing. <laughs> well, I do think Roderick Strong is the, uh, maybe the most entertaining, uh, between the ropes right now in NXT. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean that just in, in a pure wrestling sense, not in, not in character or anything, just in a pure wrestling sense. I find his style really entertaining. Always have. I thought he was uh, maybe maybe the best North American champion they've had um, during his run when Adam Cole was the world champion uh, or the NXT champion, I should say. Uh, but it was. Uh, but I really like Roderick Strong. I think he and Walter are going to put on a good match. I really do. Um, and this should gear us up for uh, for. Uh, Imperium versus uh, MSK. I, I cannot wait, or even Imperium versus the Creed Brothers be, or Diamond Mine. Oh, that! that, that, that oh, I be... love that! I love that! Yeah, no, that would the, the Creed Brothers. I actually I love the Diamond Mines. I as characters, they're, they're kind of boring. Uh, they need Malcolm Bivens, but um, but as uh, as wrestlers, they are so good between the ropes. They are so entertaining. Yeah, and it would be it would be great to see. Um, just like two factions going at it like that because msk unless you bring riddle back down then i don't know if you uh necessarily can get a trios per se like another th- trios match because that match was excellent uh, as well yeah no it really was um i don't get the impression that they want to keep bringing riddle down and i don't get like i mean he's re- like they've really involved him in the tag team scene of course uh on raw so i i don't see the apron i don't see them continuing with that maybe that's what this is all about to shift uh from msk to the diamond mine for uh for imperium's next feud yeah that would be great speaking of great today we'll be talking about the whole effing show rob van dam born in 1970 rob van dam is a former ecw uh world champion in the wwe version a wwe champion uh at one point holding both titles at the same time before an unfortunate personal incident. Uh, He's also a six-time WWE FE Intercontinental Champion, a one-time hardcore champ, uh, sorry, a four-time hardcore champion, a one-time European champion, a WWE Tag Team Champion with Rey Mysterio, a WWE World Tag Team Champion two times, once with Kane, once with Booker T, a Money in the Bank Champion, a 7th Grand Slam Champion, 15th Triple Crown Champion, a Hall of Famer in 2021. And uh, he was also in, in the Raw X Anniversary, Raw Greatest Matches Award for Tables, Ladders, and Chairs 4 from 2002. And that's just in WWE. However, what we're trying to do with the Yentas of Yentos of Wrestling podcast is look at wrestlers who had major success or were good and known in the WWE and look at how they fared outside of the WWE. Did they have a lot of success? And if they did, why was, was it because of them or was it because of better booking? So going over uh, the, the accolades of Rob Van Dam outside of the WWE in ECW, which he is best known for outside of WWE. He was an ECW world television champion one time almost for two years if i'm correct jordan yeah it sounds right um and then i believe he had to give it up due to a a legitimate injury yeah trying to remember what that was though and then he was also a two-time tag champion with sabu which is amazing 
Um, in TNA, which he's also known for, he he won the World Heavyweight Championship on his first night against Jeff Hardy, culminating uh, a lot, I want to say a year-long feud between uh, Immortal and the TNA locker room, where they brought in RVD to basically uh, be the face of the TNA locker room in the war against Immortal. He was also an X Division champion later in his career. Uh, in 2002, he was ranked number one of the top five singles, top 500 singles wrestlers on PWI's top 500. And in 2003, he dropped all the way to 152 of the top 500 single wrestlers in the PWI. Um, he's also been an IWF television champion. And one place that, that I remember him from was uh, ICW Insane Championship Wrestling, which is an indie promo promotion out of the UK. Um, I believe the WWE bought them when they created NXT UK, but uh, he was there for a short time running matches. And he's also been on, on the indie scene. The man is a legend and Jordan, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Uh, I really liked his style when I first saw him. Uh, he brought something new to the table uh, for, for the time, and you could see the impact, uh, pun intended, I suppose, uh, that, that's had over the years on other uh, wrestlers going forward. Uh, RVD was truly, uh, you know, he called himself the whole effing show Mr. Monday Night, and he really, really was. Um everything he did in the ring was so new and so impressive. Um, and it's how he got over. It's how it was so hard to, to make for him to be a heel when he had to be, because everything he did was so impressive. He had such a baby face uh, move set that he was, he was truly one of, in my opinion, I, I think he has to be called one of the best of all time. Uh, at, le at least if I had to put a top 10, I think he's in the top 10. I'd agree with that for sure. He, um, just, just, uh, after reading off his resume of, of accomplishments, I'm just like, he's definitely a hall of famer, not just in the WWE, but in wrestling in general. Like when you think of the frog splash, for instance, you think of Rob Van Dam and, uh, even the Van Terminator, which I know various wrestlers over the years have used as their own aka shane mcmahon um <laughs> and various like any heel wrestler authority figure i find who can actually go in the ring always busts out the van the van terminator or, or uh has someone kick a chair in their face it's 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 just and those are things that i associate with rob van dam is that I remember when he would make saves for people. The lights would go out, they come back on, he'd throw a chair in a guy's face and he would roundhouse kick him. Like, like it, it's, it's, yeah. It all seems like Rob Van Dam. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it was 100% the flock, the, uh, sorry, the frog splash uh, because RVD was so good at what he did. One, he got such height, such distance. The only guy I've seen compete with him in, in the frog splash uh, would, uh, well, of course, Eddie Guerrero was iconic, but uh, would be today Montez Ford, who gets so much height as well. Uh, RVD got huge height on his frog splash. He seemed like he could span the whole ring if he had to. Um, and he sold it so well, like he would go down on the guy and he'd hold his stomach. Like he was willing to put himself in pain to, to bring pain to another guy. And that was so cool. That was so cool to me. Yeah. And, and the fact that like, he seemed to have chemistry with anybody. Well, one guy, one guy that he always had chemistry with. I mean, I know we weren't going to talk too much WWE, but him and Jeff Hardy. If you go through YouTube and look at like their feud for titles, like I think there was U.S. versus Intercontinental title, title versus title, or just going for the Intercontinental title. And I'm like, holy smokes! Both of these guys, the way that they could, the chemistry between yeah. them was just was just immense. So I don't know if you'd call that like sort of ruthless uh, attitude verging on ruthless aggression era, but uh, they were kind of an iconic feud uh, to me of that era mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in and around the year 2000. Um, they were the matches they put on. And what stands out to me specifically is uh, I think it was a ladder match. It, it, well, it was a ladder match, but I think it was to, uh, to uh, I think it was European versus intercontinental title. 
Uh, and it was it was just so good. One of the best ladder matches of all time, in my opinion. Just and and that's not a surprise when you think of the two guys involved, right? Like like you put a you give them a ladder and they're willing to jump off it anywhere. Um, and they were all like they were just so entertaining together. Um, maybe now in in this world, even in their even in their later age, we could see something now that they're both uh, out of the Fed. Yeah, it's crazy to think that like I think Jeff Hardy's mid forties and RBD just turned fifty one, and both those guys, you're like, no, they have like ten years left. Even though their their style, both of them are willing to go to extreme measures to do whatever it costs to to win the match, and that's what I like about them too is that we know that wrestling is choreographed and everything, but at the same time, it's real to, it's real to some of us. Or it's, real, it's real to them in the sense yeah. that like, uh, I'm just looking on YouTube right now. And there was a hardcore title match between Jeff Hardy and, and uh, RVD at SummerSlam 2001. They gave him 20 minutes, 20 minutes for a hardcore match, which like in today's After WWE, never in today's WWE, Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Heck, even in AEW, I think they'd only give maybe like 10 minutes to. But this got 20 minutes, which is insane. And that just speaks to the to the talent that both guys have. Both guys had tremendous talent. And uh, and there's nothing against Jeff Hardy, um, but I think RVD went up. When his, his, what he could do in the ring was so innovative um, that it's no wonder to me that he kept on getting put in these spots where uh, where he would where he would go over guys. Um, like the truth is, Jeff Hardy, if it weren't for some of it, or not Jeff Hardy, rather Rob Van Dam, if it weren't for some of his personal struggles and if it weren't for some of his his injuries later in his career, I, I think he could have been one of the proverbial Mount Rushmore wrestlers. Um, you know, I mean, the fact that what really hurt him in his career was. Uh, was these personal struggles and and uh, and injuries that he ended up becoming susceptible to? Um, not that I want to label someone as an injury risk that that never helps them. Um, but but he was but he God I keep saying it he was just so entertaining like I and he kept it up like he could like like you just cited their age uh, and he could still go and like like wrestling fans today aren't like when we were six right when we we thought it when we thought it was like quote unquote real. Um, we we understand the concept of what pro wrestling is now, um, and and we have respect for the ability of a guy who's over fifty to be able to still do what he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just so impressive. It's just so impressive. I I can't say enough. I can't say it enough times. I'm actually shocked that uh, he hasn't come to AEW or even gone over to New Japan and just done some work there uh, because he'd be great. He, he'd Japan. be great. He'd be great. And I mean, if Jericho is still fighting, and that's another guy that he'd have really good matches yeah. with, if Jericho's fighting, and uh, let's not forget about his TNA feud with the icon, stay! <laughs> uh, but, but if those guys Here's are still going, go. if, if those guys are still going, heck, Sting might go for the tag titles with Darby Allen um, at this point. And uh, nobody surprise would... Me. Yeah, it, yeah, nobody would be surprised at that point. So I'm surprised... What I'm surprised at is Rob Van Dam. The whole effing show is not in AEW. Um, yeah, I, I just wonder if, um, like, this isn't against RVD either, because I just said he was one of the most impressive of all time, and he certainly was. AEW's roster is so stacked, so stacked. Uh, and it's so, I worry as someone who leans more towards AEW than WWE, mm-hmm. And there's absolutely no reason you can't like both. Yeah, I admit to watching both. Um, but the roster is getting a little bloated for me. Like, there's only so much TV time, right? And there's guys that I used to like seeing in the ring. Like, I think, I actually still think uh, guys like Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss are incredibly underrated. Mm-hmm. And they're not even on Dark anymore. Right? Yeah. Um, so I, like, there's... Like RVD can still go, and I think you put him in a in a program with like a, with like a Sammy Guevara for the TNT title or something. I think you got some entertaining stuff on your hands. Um, or if you even if you put him on a bit of a throwback program uh, with CM Punk, whew, 
I'm, I'm getting, That'd be great you know, I'm, too. I'm feeling it, right? Like I'm getting chills thinking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just worry that I, I do worry when we start talking about bringing in like every wrestler to AEW. That's a free. That's not associated with WWE. Um, that we worry about uh, just taking TV time from some of the young guys. It's interesting you mentioned that too because um, that sort of reminds me of when RVD joined uh, Impact in 2010. Because if you recall, with Impact uh, or formerly TNA Impact, they had the tendency to. Um, they had all this young talent at the time, AJ Styles, uh, Beer Money, uh, Chris Sabin, Alex Shelley, uh, yeah. Samoa Joe, um, guys who are now staples right now. But 10 years ago, they were feuding with like Kevin Nash, Sting, um, Christian, uh, Booker T, um, Jeff Jarrett. And, and so I remember at the time, as much as I love rvd when they brought in rvd as the one to dethrone evil jeff hardy as part of immortal i was like oh here we go again another wwe another guy that didn't work out in wwe well who had a successful career in wwe but was uh overshadowed by being released due to a brutal and uh a personal incident and now he's getting another chance on what was supposed to be the second or third best promotion in the world and I was like, oh, my God, here we go again. But then he managed to make it work. Like, like when he won the world title against Jeff uh, Hardy uh, 10 years ago to um, lead TNA against Immortal, you actually rooted for him. And you were like, oh, my God, this is a guy that I want to see. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like previous times when they'd have like Rhino come in, be the guy uh, for five seconds, challenge Jeff Jarrett for world title. And then suddenly, oh, my God, like. Why are we getting behind Rhino again? It was it was literally oh my god here's this guy who overcame this adversity and now he's going to lead this new company to be to go from third to second potentially because nobody passes WWE although I think AEW might nowadays so maybe one day um, I don't want to get too ahead of myself on that because like the truth is we, like we know WWE is still bringing in more uh, more revenue than AEW they're still drawing more fans. Um, but I do think AEW puts on a more entertaining product, especially for the for the wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. You know, the uh, sort of the, the smart mark. Uh, you know, I, I think they put on a more entertaining product, um, whereas WWE really does seem to be targeting more uh, more mainstream fans, bringing in celebrities and bringing in their you know their throwbacks to uh, to the Attitude Era or the Ruthless Aggression Era. You know, um, just throwing cash at Brock Lesnar who don't get me wrong I actually think the Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns stuff is the most entertaining uh, stuff in WWE for the last like 10 years maybe mm-hmm. um, however um, just match in match out is from AEW is what is what I look forward to and I don't get that out of WWE anymore so that's a side note I do think um, I do think like when we look at the way a- Rob Van Dam was used in TNA was the perfect way to use him to yeah. use a, a veteran um and but i just i i wonder if you could use a veteran that way these days um or if people would just like even a even a daniel brian or sorry a brian danielson uh, even the american dragon is has been accused of taking spots and he's arguably the best in the world going today uh and he's been accused of taking spots in AEW. like i think it's hard for a guy like rob van dam to come into AEW and uh, assert himself into a meaningful program yeah, I, I sort of felt like in uh, Van Damme's most recent run with uh, Katie Forbes, that was sort of the joke they were going with, is that here's a veteran who's looking for a payday. So it's sort of a shot at um, WWE in the sense yeah. that like, oh, we bring in these guys, these part-time guys, and now we're going to uh, have RVD and we're going to push him to the moon. And then he feuded with Rich Swan and Willie Mack, uh, which... Like, it made sense, kind of, but it didn't make sense. Like, I think they were going to have him feud with Kenny at one point when Kenny had all the belts, but but yeah. they didn't trust him enough because he's 51 years old now. Yeah. Um, yeah, he put on some great stuff uh, in his last run. Uh, I'm looking now at some of the at some of the stuff he did, right, where he uh, – got uh, oh, Sammy Callahan match. What a great match that was uh, yeah. in Impact. Um you know, he was, he was just, he, he was really good in his last run and he was used 
perfectly. Um, you know, bringing him back together with Sabu too uh, in a in a an Impact ring was uh, was such a throwback to like our generation. Uh, our generation is youth. Um, like when I first heard about ECW, like mm-hmm. like you mean it's WWE and they do and they do hardcore matches all the time. That's so cool. And you had guys like RVD and Sabu just doing amazing things. Um, yeah, no, it was, it, it was really it was really smart to put them back together uh, in in the in the latest Impact run. Yeah, I remember because uh, Sabu didn't last that long in this most recent run with RVD. Uh, but then again, neither did RVD in this most yeah. recent run. But I remember them say, I remember seeing on Twitter people being like. Sabu is such a is such a um, liability issue for people, and I'm like, Sabu's been a liability issue for the last thirty years. <laughs> like this is nothing new. <laughs> yes, he's yes he's sixty two now, but like at the time he was like in his thirties wrestling with with RVD and doing like light matches, lights ma- lights out matches against like the Dudley Boys. Like of course he was a liability then. The funny thing is, we could do a whole we could do a whole two hours on on Sabu like. Mm. I remember he got a great match. I think it was just on Raw out of uh, John Cena, who, uh, who you know can be accused of doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. But he got a great match out of him. Um, and true story, um, I had the uh, the barbed wire match with Terry Funk saved on my computer for like ten years. Uh, I kept on just transferring it from computer to computer because, yes, it is it is brutal violence. Like Sabu is, is famously known for, you know, taking duct tape to, to tape up his bi- torn bicep uh, in the match. Like it is, it is maybe the most violent match in history. Maybe um, there's certainly some arguments to be made for others, um, but I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. So, so I could watch I, it. I watched Sabu and, uh, and Terry Funk over and over again. So you love violence? then that's what you said i I like uh, well the funny thing is is that it depends what i'm in the mood for right like that's the great thing about pro wrestling right Mm -hmm. and i you know um is that sometimes i love that hardcore violence you know barbed wire match uh and other times i want i want a really good technical match one of my favorite matches of all time was wrestlemania 10 bret hart versus sonar one of the best technical matches i think uh wwf slash e ever did Mm -hmm. Um, so Rob Van Dam, back to, yeah, yeah. back to, yeah, our cir- cir- circle back around, C- circle back growing things on our first, uh, on our first recorded pod here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for being with us. Uh, once people <laughs> listen, thank you so much. Uh, we're, we're big <laughs> wrestling nerds, so we get sidetracked a lot, but Rob Van Dam, um, what are your earliest memories of Rob Van Dam? So I was, a, I was a WWF kid uh and i know we've talked about that a little bit but i was a wwf kid so for me rob my introduction to rob van dam came when he uh was going through his heel run in ecw and he and he was teasing that he was going to leave for uh for wwf and he was accompanied by jerry lawler to the ring on raw when wwf and ecw had that working relationship for a short period of time in Um, 97 in 97 yeah, yeah, uh, and that was my first introduction to Rob Van Dam. And um, despite his being a heel, and I was like, I was at a point in life in my life where I was like, oh, I know people are saying it's fake, but I don't listen to them. Um, but like, this is why I say it was so hard to make him a heel because the stuff he did was just the coolest stuff ever. Like, like when I watched wrestling, there were there was guys who I felt like oh, I could try that. Um, but with him, I was like, no way. Like, mm. you know, there's just no way I could ever do that. Mm. Um, and I was like, I guess in 97, so I was 12 years old, right? Like there was just no way that that anything Rob Van Dam did came close to looking like something a regular person can do. Um, and that's why it was just like, that's why I, I loved watching him work. Um, but that was my introduction to him when he sort of appeared on a WWF screen as as opposed to W uh, to ECW, yeah, which I think benefited both companies. Oh, I think that so too. relationship, like yeah. it, it taught me that ECW existed and to watch it, and it was cool. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember my earliest memory of him 
is him actually losing I think it was the TV title to Kid Cash and the scenario I'll, I'll paint the picture for you uh, the entire RVD had gone heel and he was he was with the network so Cyrus the virus and uh, Rhino and uh, all these other guys oh no 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 it wasn't it wasn't RVD sorry my mistake my mistake Rhino had the Rhino had the TV title and he was part of he was part of the um, network which in storyline for ECW back in like 99 or two, no 2000 2001 was the network had bought um, ECW and was going to sell it off to an unknown buyer that unknown buyer then became WWE who was then Stephanie McMahon and Paul Heyman who merged with WCW to form the alliance that would go against uh, WWE uh, at the time WWF. And it was supposed to be like a storyline that would last for years and years and be amazing. And you would have all these stars. Turns out behind the scenes, Vince McMahon didn't want to pay anybody. So it lasted five minutes, maybe. It, it was such a short lived storyline that could have been, it could have been the best of all time. It could it really it have been. It could have literally gone for like the first half of the 2000 decade. Like it could have gone 2000, 2005, I think. My, my understanding was that was the sort of the intent, right? And that ECW was going to continue as ECW. Mm-hmm. Um, only WWE would f- formally own them or WWF at the time would formally own them, but they would act as even almost a bit of a, a, a proto what NXT became. But obviously that never happened. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, getting back to that early memory so so essentially uh the network was gonna was gonna basically burn all the titles and rhino was gonna be declared like co-world champion slash co-tv title champion and so the entire locker room gets into this brawl and it's amazing and it's on it's on tnt by the way which like i somehow had and i was like oh my god i can watch this it's amazing anyways um t- uh so everybody's brawling and kid cash wants to challenge Rhino to the to the match, but he can't get to the ring because everybody is fighting. So what does he do? He crowd surfs to the ring and and finally gets there. And Rhino just kills him right away. And right before he can make this make the pin, the lights go out and all you hear is walk uh, by Pantera, which was uh, probably Rob Van Dam's most famous uh, music, I would say. Like they've done various versions of, of it since. Or uh, that do 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 the whole effing show. That's another good theme song by him. Anyways, the lights go out, walk hits, RVD makes his way to the ring. Van Daminator puts cash on top of Rhino. One, two, three. Cash save RVD saves the company and he becomes like the biggest face of all time. And I'm like, oh my God, this dude yeah. is a star. Like how anyone can miss on him, I have no idea. Arguably, WWE almost did too, not just because um, because of his own personal struggles, but because he should have won the title um, before he did. Mm-hmm. Like there, there was a match that stands out. I'm trying to remember what, what the what the pay per view was. Um, he was, I where he was hardcore champion, and he was going up against, but he was going up in his triple threat against kurt angle and triple h Mm -hmm. um and arguably that would have been the match to um, i feel like it was a SummerSlam, but arguably that would have been the match to make him world champion and create a new star um if he eventually got his championship because he just couldn't he was just that good Mm -hmm. um but like arguably wb almost missed the boat on him they were they they almost did yeah yeah which is crazy because um just going back to that alliance storyline um i remember he was he because kurt angle joined for a short time and then uh they were splitting up and when they were splitting up and stone cold was stone cold when he all went back to went back to the alliance to fight wwe uh so he he then when wwe when the alliance lost wwe because the idea was that nobody can defeat the wwf back then uh so rvd was a guy that that um stone cold would just have would just bully for no reason like he like because the persona that that uh rvd has always carried is one that that um i think people can relate to in the sense not necessarily the stonerness of it but like just a casual hey man 
I'm cool with whatever. Like people see that in Riddle right now, very, very roughly, but I don't know if he would be, or a guy outside of WWE who is probably nonchalant like that would maybe be even CM Punk, even though they're totally d- different guys. Yeah. Yeah, I can see the similarities uh, that you're referencing uh, in a modern CM Punk character. Mm-hmm. A guy who's, you know, just just coming in there and, you know, he, he's laid back about it all. Yeah, and when people are, like, uh, bullying him, he's just like, dude, you don't have to bully me. If you want to fight me, I'll fight you. And that's <laughs> that's basically RVD's whole approach to things. He's like, I'll kick your head in if you want me to kick your head in. And and <laughs> that's and away we go sort of thing. And then, and then that really uh, skyrocketed him. Like his feud was his brief feud with Stone Cold really skyrocketed him into this yep. position where fans knew him from his ECW cult days to as a big star to this guy can get across on the mainstream and then everywhere he's gone since this guy can get across which is which is something that I don't think a lot of guys have like I know they've I know recently with WWE they've they've released a lot of people but there's a lot of people who I think were just like. WWE bound like I don't know if if uh, Braun Strowman for instance can get across outside of WWE yeah yeah um, there, there's a lot of guys that it's difficult they don't always translate to the indies as well uh, and RVD has been able to successfully do that mm-hmm. um, you know and, and we've we've seen it and and Braun Strowman is a good example though another side note i really liked the stuff he did with ec3 uh in uh in that cinematic uh stuff that ec3 is doing lately um but but there are guys that are made for wwe like there's there's just there's body type and uh and a work type that are just made for wwe or one of the big companies um like uh like, like randy orton's never going anywhere no. you know anywhere else and uh and someone like um like I don't think Kevin Nash and Scott Hall really, really worked on the on on any of the uh, indies, um, despite being two of the most over wrestlers at one time in in the world probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but RVD has been successfully able to translate to indie to the indie promotions, um, and even sort of the uh, I don't know what you'd want to call the sort of the maybe super indies like the Impact where they're they're not. They're not the Fed, and they're not WCW or AEW today, um, but they're still sizable. Was he ever in Ring of Honor? Or, RVD? Uh, RVD. I, don't I, don't, f- I don't think he had a Ring of Honor run. Um, Just looking here, Independent Circuit. Yeah, I don't think he ever had an, a, a Ring. Of, he might have, uh, like, he might have sort of missed Ring of Honor, but like, he went straight to TNA from WWE, um, and then he returned. Apparently he was in PWG, which just sounds amazing. Like I need to find the footage for that. Yeah, he probably worked well in PWG. Yeah, apparently he had a wrestle. Five star. Yeah, apparently he defeated Chris Hero and Roderick Strong in a sky high three way match. And I'm like, hmm. oh my god. Uh, oh, of course he did House of Hardcore. That makes sense. That's Tommy Dreamer's uh, yeah. promotion. Yeah. Um, one of the guys that he'll always be with is Jerry Lynn, who's a guy who we will we'll have to do a future episode on. I know he wasn't really in WWE for, I, I don't even know if he was in WWE, Jerry Lynn. But, Jerry Lynn, former light WWF light heavyweight champion. Okay, so he was. So yeah. that's a guy outside of WWE who, I mean, you could say there is no impact, but I mean, TNA without him having those matches with AJ Styles in the beginning of the... Uh, I yeah, like decade. For me, Jerry Lynn, like yes, Jerry Lynn had a WWF run, uh, but for me, Jerry Lynn's definitely more of an indie guy. And even now, he's um, I think he's the lead road agent for uh, for AEW. I don't know what his exact role is, but I think he's he's one of the road agents. Jerry Lynn, let me check. But yeah, their their careers are tied together. They had so much good in ECW. They had so much. Uh, I don't know how much they crossed over in Impact uh, or TNA, but they both uh, were obviously there, and they both uh, had a they both they both had really successful runs in that promotion. Um, Jerry Lynn, obviously, multi time uh, X Division champion as well, um, and I think RVD like 
honestly, putting the belt on him his first night, I, I would usually say don't do that, but it worked really well for him. And him. And them. It worked really well in the storyline. Yeah, it worked out best for everybody. Probably uh, at a time when I think TNA was at its worst. Yeah. Just generally. I did yeah. not enjoy Immortal. I, I didn't. I watched it. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. I thought there, it was, thought it was, was silly. <laughs> yeah, there was some stuff where I was like, they're trying to recreate WCW. By oh, yeah. Us. Oh, yeah. They, were, and, they felt like they could be the next WCW. Uh, and that was, and that's where I think AEW, and we could even do that kind of comparison on its own show too. That's where I think AEW is different. They recognize that it's not 1987 anymore, right? Like you can't launch, you can't relaunch WCW. You've got to do something different. Yeah, exactly. So with, uh, so that was our recap on how awesome RVD is. Uh, amongst other things. <laughs> amongst other, amongst other things. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, Jordan, we'll be back next week. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Look forward to it. Sounds good. Um, I'll finish the recording and stay on the, stay on. Yeah, for sure.